Good day, everyone. I am Grims A. Garvey. I'm a bit of a Twitter student. And for today's video, I will show you on how to set up and configure a wireless router. But first up, we need to discuss about how to set up a wireless router. First, purchase a wireless router. Routers come in all shapes and sizes. Compare features to the fine router that is right for you. If you have more area that you need to cover, or have lots of posts in your home, you'll need a router that offers the option of upgrading antennas with high gain types if not supplied in the box. Next, connect your router to your modem. Routers and wireless routers enables you to share your broadband internet connection with multiple devices. To do so, you will need to connect your broadband modem to the router. For best result, place your router near your modem. Connect the router and the modem with an Ethernet cable. Most routers and come packaged with a short Ethernet cable that you can use for this. Connect any devices you want to hardwire with Cat5 or better, Ethernet cables. If you have computers that are close to a video console or TV, you can connect them to the router via Ethernet. This will result in a more stable and faster connection and doesn't require any configuration. 4. Connect at least one computer via Ethernet. You will need at least one computer connecting via Ethernet cable in order to adjust your router settings. You can disconnect this computer afterwards if you want to connect wirelessly. You can also connect your laptop wirelessly for the first time. The Wi-Fi network name and default password will be printed on the router's label. Next. When you power on the router, it will create its Wi-Fi network and the device will be connected to the router's Wi-Fi connection, not the internet. To connect the router to the internet with the same internet providers, it is required to register router's MAC address to the internet service provider website. MAC of the router can be found printed on the router or in the document section. Two, go to the internet service provider's website, log in with a username and password provided by the internet service provider, and go to MAC address update option. One can see the existing laptop or computer's MAC address there, and the router's MAC address there were on save it. This process means that the router is authorized to use the Ethernet provided by the broadband company. Number 3. Configuring the router. If this a new installation or new router, determine the default IP address that may be printed on the label effects to the router or in the documentation. If you can find the router's IP address anywhere, you can do a web research or search for the router model to see what the default address is. So, open a web browser on a computer that is connected to the router. Enter in the IP address and press enter. Your browser will attempt to connect to the router's configuration menu. If your router came with an installation list, you can run the configuration program from that instead. It will accomplish many same function. Third, connect your other devices. Besides other computers and tablets, you can connect other devices as well, such as printers, game consoles, TVs, and more. 
See the following guides for instruction for a specific device. Install a wireless printer. Connect a PlayStation 3 to a wireless network. Connect an Xbox 360 to a wireless net network. Connect a Nintendo Wi-Fi to a wireless network. 4. Open the wireless settings. When you log in to your router, you will be taken to the router's main menu or status screen. There will be several options to choose from. The internet section can usually be left at default settings unless you receive a specific instruction from your internet provider. The wireless section will allow you to set up your wireless network. Number 5. Enter a name for wireless network. In the wireless section, you, sh you should see a field labeled SSID or name. Enter a unique name for a wireless network. This is what <coughs> other devices will see then scanning for networks. Check the box to enable SSID broadcast. This will essentially turn on the wireless network so that it may be readily seen by anyone in the range of the signal. See the tips section below for additional information on the SSID setting. Number 6. Choose a security method. <coughs> Choose from the list of the available security options. For the best security, choose WPA2-PSK as the encryption method. This is the most difficult security to crack and will give the most protection from hackers and intruders. 7. Create a passphrase. <coughs> Once you've chosen your security method, enter a passphrase for the network. This should be a difficult password with a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Don't use any password that can be easily de deduced or see from the network name or <coughs> from the network. Number 8. Save your settings. Once you are finished naming and securing your wireless network, click the Apply or Save button. The changes will be applied to your router, which may take a few moments. Once the router has finished resetting, your wireless network will be enabled. Number 9. Change your router's username and password from the default. Once you have your network configured, you should change the username and password that you use to access your router. This will help protect your router from unauthorized changes and you can change this from the administration section of the router configuration menu. Number 10. Block sites. If you want to prevent devices that are connected to your network from Assessing certain websites, you can use built-in blocking tools to restrict access. This can be found in a security block section of the router. You can usually block by specific domain names or by keyboards. Next part 4. Connecting your devices. Connect a computer, tablet, or smartphone to the wireless network. Scan for the wireless network with the SSID you provided above. On any device that supports a wireless network, you should see your new network as long as you are within range of the router. Select it and you will be prompted for password, passwords, or password phrase. Second, enter your wireless passphrase. Once you enter the passphrase, your device will automatically connect it to the wireless network. The network will be stored in your device's memory and will automatically connect whenever you are within range. For detailed instruction on the selecting and joining wireless network, for a specific computer, tablet, or smartphone, follow this guide. 
Second, connect your other devices. Besides other computers and tablets, you can connect other devices as well, such as printers, game consoles, TVs, and more. See the following guides for the specific instruction for a specific device. Oh, that's it about the how to set up a wireless router. And now let's proceed on how to configure a router. Part 1. Connecting to the router. Connect your router to your modem and your modem. Use Ethernet cables to connect your modem to the one or WLAN or Ethernet port on your router. And connect your computer to the number one, two, three or four port on the router. Second, open a web browser. Your router's configuration page can be accessed by any computer that is connected to the same network. When configuring your router, you will have the best result if you connect with a computer that is wired to the router with an Ethernet cable. Next, enter in your router's address. Routers can access through your web browser by entering the IP address into the address bar. The IP address bars are a bit by manufacturer but most are the same or very close. These are some of the most popular manufacturers and the associated addresses. For enter in your username and password. Before you access the configuration page, you will be asked for username and password. Most routers will come with a default username or password combo. Will some allow you to proceed without entering anything? Next, reset your routers if you can't access it. If you look up your default address and username password combo and, and you can still can't access your router, you can reset it to the factory defaults to clear out any changes that may have been made. This is useful for secondhand routers or old changes that you can't remember. Number 6. Assign the router a new username and password. Leaving a router with a default username and password is very insecure. And you should change it immediately after setting it up. You can usually find this in the administration section of the router's configuration. Choose a username and password that can be silly guessed. Include numbers and symbols in a password to make sure that it's hard to crack or seen by the hackers or the intruders. <laughs> Part 2. Setting up a wireless network. Check your Ethernet settings. In the Ethernet setup or home menu of your router, check that your Ethernet IP address, DCHP, and DNS settings are all set. They should typically be set to automatic unless your service provider informs you otherwise. Many routers will provide a test button on the internet menu page. Click it to check your internet settings are configured correctly. Second, open the wireless settings. This menu may be called wireless settings basic setup or something similar. This page will display your wireless SSID, channel, encryption, and other settings. Third, name your network. Find the field labeled SSID. This is the name of your labeled network. And it will appear in the list of available networks for wireless devices. Be sure not to put any personal information in your network name, as the name will be public. <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure that the enable the enable SSID button. 
broadcast box is checked. The channel should be set to auto. If you have a lot of wireless networks in your area, your router will automatically move to the network to a clean channel. Fourth, choose your wireless encryption. This can be also be called a security option where you'll be able to choose which method you want to use to encrypt your network traffic. The option for most routers are WEP, WPA PSK, and WPA2 PSK. WPA2 is the most secure mode of encryption. And you should use it if all your devices support it. Only other devices do not support WPA2. Number 5. Choose a passphrase. The passphrase is what you enter when the device connects to your network. A strong passphrase will help protect your network from unwanted intruders. You should always have a passphrase for your network. Number 6. Apply your settings. Once you have chosen your SSID, encryption type, and passphrase, click the apply or save button to start your wireless network. Your router will process for a few seconds, and then your wireless network will be detectable by your wireless devices. Part 3. Forwarding ports. First, open the port forwarding menu. This can usually be found in the advanced section of the router's configuration page. Second, add a new service or role. Click the button to add a custom service. This will open a form where you can enter the port forwarding information. Third, save or apply the rule. Your router will process for a few minutes or moments, and then the changes will be applied. Your program will now be able to access the open port per the computer you specified. The next part is the blocking the websites. It is very important to block any websites. First, open the block sites menu. This can be found in the security or parental control section of the configuration menu. You can block sites from being accessed by any devices on your network. Though, you can allow specific devices to access them. You can also set a schedule for the blocks, which is especially useful for homework time or when you need to focus on your work. Second, add a site to the blocks list. Your option will change depending on the router you are using. Some routers allow you to block keyboards or keywords as well as specific sites. And add what you want to block to the list. Third, Allow trusted computers to view block sites. You can check a box to allow trusted IP address or addresses to view block sites. This can be useful for parents who still want to access to sites that they are blocked for their kids. Once you've checked the box, add it the IP addresses you want to bypass the block. This guide will help tell you how to find your IP address. Number 4. Set your block schedule. This may be separate menu from the block list. You can select which days of the week you can block to take effect, as well as the time of the day that it is implemented. Once you are done, click the apply button. And that's it for today's video about the 
how to set up and configure a wireless router and it is important to setting up first the wireless router before you configure it so that you're be unable to or able to connect your, dev your any device sales about your wireless router at home and I hope that you learned a lot about my discussion and thank you for listening and have a good day.